It's time for this week's episode of Brandon Sports Talk, featuring in-depth interviews from those who are trending in the world of athletics. And now, here's the host of Brandon Sports Talk, Brandon Pate. Welcome back to Brandon Sports Talk. In today's episode, I have the privilege of interviewing the Southern Oregon's head women's basketball coach, Coach Claudia Carpenter Pruitt. How are you doing today? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing good. Can you talk about how you knew that you want to get started in coaching in college women's basketball? Yeah. You know, I, um, with my family background, my grandpa coached for a long time. My dad coached for a long time. And so I've I kind of grew up in the gym and once I was kind of in my junior year of college playing at Point Loma, I, I was like, I don't want to be done with this. You know, I want to make sure that I'm staying around basketball and coaching was kind of the best way to do that. So I I tell my family I didn't really have a choice. They told me not to coach, but here I am. But it was, you know, it was just kind of what I'd grown up with and what I'm um, comfortable with. And I think college is the best time to really make an impact on uh, young women's lives. I know college was a huge part of my life. And so um, I just felt like it it was the right fit with that part of it. I mean, I got to work in the pros a little bit too, which was really fun. But I just think when you are, you know, with young females, um, you get to really help kind of shape um, what their college years look like, and that can be good or bad. And so I wanted to make sure I'm making a good impact there. What was that experience like for you going to college and playing collegiate basketball for Point Lamona? I loved it. You know, I I took I was a junior college kid, so I spent two years at Ventura College, and um, and then transferred to Point Loma, and it was the best. We were right on the beach, and <laughs> we'd open up the back doors, and it was like sunset over the beach. And our coaches, you know, it's a water break, but our coaches are like, "You guys got to get back in here." We just wanted to to watch the sunset, but um, I loved it. It was a great school and um, a really competitive conference that we played in, and loved my teammates. So it was it was a, a really great learning experience for me, but also just. I couldn't have picked a better school for myself and um, just what what fit me the best. During your time, what was it like getting to represent them and putting on that jersey for them? It was awesome. Yeah, I, I think I take it for granted, you know, uh, and I try to tell my kids that all the time is like those four years go by really fast and, you know, have pride and gratitude every time you put on that jersey. And I think I definitely took, you know, took it for granted a little bit. But looking back, it was um, it was an awesome experience. During your time as a collegiate athlete, what were some of your biggest accomplishments on the basketball? You know, when I was at Ventura College, we uh, my coach, Ned Mercedic, he's a legend there. He's he had won when I was there. I think it was one conference 23 years in a row, which is insane. Like there's, (laughs) there were no down years. And so I think he actually ended up finishing with winning it 28 years in a row. So when I was there, we went undefeated in conference. And I think we were 22, 23 peak, ended up going to the final four of the state tournament and lost in the, in the final four. But we had a really you know, we had a really good team and my dad got to help coach that year, which was really fun too. But I mean, I think just trying to continue the legacy that Ned had there was a huge accomplishment. He Every year he, he would say, don't be the ones, don't be the ones to ruin the streak. So I feel like that's a huge accomplishment that we didn't ruin the streak. <laughs> Coming out of college, what was that experience like for you continuing your family legacy that your father and grandfather had and going coaching in the NBA and WNBA. Yeah, you know, my dad, he was coaching um, for the Tulsa Shock when I was in college. And so my uh, two of the summers, I interned with his team. And that really just gave me the experience to learn how to use, you know, how to help with scouting reports, how to use Synergy, how to use Fast Scout, you know, all the things that they do in college. And so that gave me a lot of really good experience. And then my final year he was with the LA Sparks so I got to spend some time there and 
Um, it just got me ready to be a GA, um, which I did next as a grad assistant. It got me ready to just be able to step into that role right away. And there was a lot I had to learn, but there was a lot that I already knew just because of those internships. So, you know, I think it it's funny because my grandpa, you know, he was a defensive guy and he'd always send me, you know, these big, long messages after games like, hey, you know, here's things you can do. And I'm just a GA or like a third assistant. Like, I don't have a whole lot of say in the program at that point. Um, but he was just really excited that I was, you know, continuing to do what what he what he did for so long. And, and same with my dad. What was that experience like getting to work with the Indiana Fever? And the Los Angeles Sparks. It was awesome. Yeah, I was with the Fever. The summer I was a GA, I was with the Fever. My dad was with them for a couple months. And then one of the assistant coaches at Winthrop took another job. And so like middle of the summer, the head coach calls me and is like, hey, you want to be, you want to move up and be an assistant. So I kind of got thrown into it really quickly. But it was, again, like being with the Fever, it was it was a different role than I had in the past. I was helping with more like video and like live coding during games. So I was kind of in the, in the back room. Like I didn't even get to watch the games. I was like in the back room with our video guy, like helping code the games. So that was a really cool experience for me because it was different than kind of what I had done in the past. But yeah, they had a, they had a really good team that year, but I, I didn't get to finish out the season with him because I ended up getting a full-time job. So it, it worked out for, you know, the best, but you know, those experiences, they, they'll they last forever for me. And just, I, I was able to learn so much from them. Of course, what was that experience like for you going to Winthrop and being the assistant coach there? Yeah, you know, like I said, I kind of got thrown into the fire. You know, my first day on the job was going recruiting um, in Nashville, which that tournament is, there's like a hundred and something courts. So I walked in like so... <laughs> overwhelmed not knowing what I was doing but you know, coach coach Hammy her brother is actually Rip Hamilton um, but she was an assistant uh, at Winthrop when I was there and she really like took me under her wing and and she was an amazing recruiter amazing coach um, and so she you know just kind of threw me into the fire with her and taught me as you know I went and um, just having somebody like that that I was able to learn from was was huge for me and you know I I recruited a lot that year it was a total different side than I thought that college basketball was you think that it's more on the court and coaching but so much of it is being on the road and recruiting and finding the right people and so that was it was very eye opening for me of you know this is what it what it really looks like um but again like another great experience of just learning on the fly and um kind of learning as i go what was that experience like for you going to Arizona State and being the director of operations with Arizona yeah that was um you know it, it was a total you know 360 i think you know i i went from coaching a little bit more and and recruiting more to now i was helping the coaches with doing graphics i was helping the coaches um, with their scouting reports and just being at a, a higher level, you know, ASU was known for being, you know, top of the conference of the Pac-12 every year, making the tournament every year. Um, Charlie Turner Thorne had been there for 20 something years when I got there. And so she is a, a tireless worker and she taught me a lot and taught me a lot about being a mom and a coach and being a woman, I, I hadn't been around an under a woman coach yet, like even my playing careers. So that was really cool for me to get to learn and experience that from her. But I, I learned so much and I worked my butt off for sure. It was, it was a hard job. I didn't get to be on the court, but it taught me so much and just got me prepared for, for this job, you know, and got me prepared for the next job. And I learned a ton there and, and it was a lot of fun, um, but it was, it was definitely hard work. What was that experience like for you getting to experience that division one level at Arizona State and working as the director of operations. Yeah, like I said, I mean that um it's the Pac-12 is 
was so good you know it's not not together anymore which is really sad but it was a a dog fight day in and day out and um you're not only competing for recruits with other pac-12 teams you're competing on the court and so there were there were just so many more things to it than i thought again you know marketing getting people to games fundraising um i mean all kind camps like all kinds of things that i learned that weren't just basketball there and so we got to take some really fun trips i think when i first got the job it was like a week after i got the job we got to go to costa rica so that was super fun and i like barely had any um responsibilities because i just got there so it was it was pretty fun and um another year we went to um Cancun for a tournament so we really got to to travel and do some fun things during um during those years as well what was that experience like for you going to San Jose State and being the assistant coach there yeah I think you know when I was at Arizona State it really prepared me to take that job um that was the next step that I wanted to take was a division one assistant job and you know we there in the Mountain West it's a it's a a good conference and you know we we weren't that good yet um and so that was a real challenge of okay you know she brought in a lot of young assistants and our head coach JC was young as well and so I thought we had a lot of high energy um just trying to get the right people in there to you know help us get better and so it was a different kind of challenge for me it was really you know, a, again, a ton of recruiting, a ton of, um, you know, building relationships with the players, academics, making sure they're good on that. Um, so again, it was a, a different challenge, but it, it it's prepared me for every, every walk of life for sure. While at St. Joseph State, what were some of the things that you were able to accomplish? Yeah, so my first year, we were six and 20 something, like we won six games. It was it was rough. But then the second year, we ended up winning 19 games. And it was the biggest turnaround in the nation. That was the best, the most wins San Jose State had had. And I don't I think it was like 40 years or something crazy like that. And so being able to accomplish that was massive. I mean, you know, it was it was not easy and there were there were hard days, but to be able to have a turnaround like that, I think we finished um maybe third in the conference that year and we got picked last. I think it it really showed okay, if you if you work, if you do if you get, you know, you got to get some good players, but if you just stay with it and we had a lot of returners from that team before that won six games but they were really young and they just kept working and stayed resilient. And so having a turnaround like that was um, a pretty cool accomplishment. How was that transition like for you going from being assistant coach to now coming to Southern Oregon and becoming a head coach? Yeah, I think at first it was, um, it was, it was nerve wracking me for me to just make a change. Like, now you know when you're an assistant they're not all standing you know sitting in front of you and you got to tell them what to do all the time you're talking to the other coaches and now it's like this whole team is looking at you like okay what are we gonna do you know what's on the game plan today and so it's it is much different um you have to be prepared every day you have to have energy every day you have to bring you know who you are every single day because if you don't your team is going to follow that i that is a biggest thing i've learned is however i act my team's going to act and so how do i want them to be how do i want them you know to love each other how do i want them to work every day i have to bring that same energy so it was it was a huge you know change just because of i you know it's all on me at the end of the day you know i've got a couple of assistant coaches but at the end of the day everything is on me but i think with being a ga being an assistant being a director of ops like i've done everything besides being a coach and so when i got here it was just being confident and knowing that i've like started to build my philosophy and um just pouring that out into them you know the little things like tra you know doing team travel doing the laundry like those are all things you have to do at this level but i already felt comfortable with it because i had done it and everything else i you know uh, academics i've done all that and so all those jobs prepared me to take this one it just i wasn't prepared quite yet to be like 
the head haunt. Like uh, it's, I got to talk the talk every day. I got to play and practice every day. Like that was really different. But once you, once I like dove into it, it just became who I was. And it was like, okay, I made the right choice. This is, you know, where I'm supposed to be. <laughs> what was that feeling like for you getting announced to become the next head coach at Southern Oregon? I was insanely excited. I said yes right away. I didn't even hear how much I was going to make. I didn't even talk to my husband. I was like, yeah, we're going, we're doing this. Um, <laughs> it was really exciting. It's just something that I've um you know dreamed about and um it's really hard it is the it's very very competitive um in this basketball world and to get a good nai job like this is is really hard to do and um i didn't have a ton of connections here it was really based off of my resume coming up and having a good interview um and people calling for me you know charlie turner thorne calling for me jamie craig had calling for me so that I think, you know, that went a long way, but I was like, there was a dream come true to me. It was, we just knew this was a, a perfect fit. Um, my husband as well, even though I didn't tell him I took it right away, he was, <laughs> he was excited, but um, it was just, we knew that this could be a, a really great place to be. After getting announced to become the next head coach, what was that feeling like stepping onto that court for the first time as a head coach? Yeah, you know, I think, um, it, for practice, it kind of helped because we did like small groups when I first got there. And so it's not, you know, 15 of them staring at me. Um, so it kind of helped me get a little bit more comfortable right away. But that first game, I was I was definitely nervous. Um, just, you know, I think you, you prepare so much for these things and um, you just want to play good basketball. That's that's the biggest thing. And you just don't know until you start playing. You know, you're going against each other in practice every day, but you don't know until you play somebody else. So it was nerve wracking. But again, it was just like the first day of practice, like even though I hadn't had experience doing that yet, I just dove into it. And the more you do it, the more I think confident you get. Um, obviously, like my dad being a volunteer assistant for us is huge for me because he's so good with the game management and things like that. And so um, I always have him in the back of my ear kind of helping me out along the way. So that's been just a huge resource for a younger coach that I mean, this was only year three for me that doesn't know what I'm doing yet. It's it's really helpful for having, you know, a resource like him. What was that feeling like the first time you got a win as a head coach? Yeah, it was awesome. I mean, it, sometimes you get so caught up in like, oh, OK, we didn't play well, this and that. But um, I think my husband always kind of brings it back to reality for me of like, dude, you, that was your first collegiate win. Like that is pretty cool. You know, you, you need to enjoy that and, um, you know, have fun with that. So it was, yeah, it was again, nerve wracking, but it was uh, a great feeling for sure. Of course. What are some of the things that you've been able to accomplish so far throughout your career? Yeah. You know, this year we won the regular season championship and tournament championship. Um, and that was a, a huge deal. I felt like this team had the capabilities of doing that and we had some rough patches in the season and they really just took on the challenge of what needed to be done to get to that point point. and so you know this year and then my very first year we won um, the tournament championship and each of the three years i've been the the head coach here we've made it to the second round of the national tournament so my first year we ran into the masters and they had why am i blanking on her name right now but she's six six plays in the WNBA now like she plays for the dallas wings was at Iowa State for a year. We ran into her her senior year. So that was that was a little tough <laughs> going against somebody like that. But I think again, this is a place that you can win and we're not satisfied. Like our our softball team, our wrestling team, they've won national championships. And so you look at that and you say, okay, that's where we want to be. Like we want to be winning national championships and we're close, but we're not there yet. Um, and so just continuing to work to, to get to that point. Can you talk about, of course, the culture that you've helped to build for the Southern Oregon's women's 
basketball program? Yeah, that was probably the biggest part coming in is was um, the culture piece. And again, being at Arizona State, Charlie was huge on culture. You know, she had some really good teams and they weren't the most talented, but she got every ounce out of every player on that team because they just bought into each other. They loved each other. They worked extremely hard. And so, um, you know, I, I kind of took that a lot of that from her and that was the number one thing is you know no matter what like we're you guys are sisters we love each other um but we're going to be tough and i think i think the way we play is kind of built into that you know we are a pressure man to man we get after people um and you can't do that without trusting each other and you can't do that without working hard and so i feel like you know, we do talk about things a lot and we have journals and we do team bonding and things like that. But I think a lot of like who we are is just derived from practice and and how we play. And we're not going to be successful if they don't if they don't do those things. And so I think that's kind of how they get bought into it. And it's funny because, you know, my AD was like, do you have like a you know, I feel like everybody has their own like phrase, right? Like, like we, or, you know, like, I don't know, the Everett love, love work, something like everybody kind of each coach kind of has their own like phrase. And I'm just not that creative. Like, I don't have that. But I feel like I try to message it off of like what I feel like our team needs that day, that week, that month, and who we want to be. And I think, you know, I was talking to one of my assistants, like toughness is a huge word that we use a lot. And toughness is not just like being strong and fit. Toughness is like loving people when you don't necessarily want to, right? (laughs) Or, you know, helping helping uh, fundraise when you necessarily don't want to. Like that to me is toughness of just like, okay, we're going to I'm going to do it regardless. It doesn't matter. I'm going to, if I see a need, I feel a need. So I would say that's kind of, you know, who we are, but I, I don't really have like a phrase, like, you know, it's just maybe someday I'll come up with something, but. <laughs> what does a typical game day look like for you as a head coach versus for your players? You know, it kind of depends on the day. I have a two-year-old daughter uh, that needs to get picked up from school. So if my husband can't do it, um, I'm picking her up and she's hanging out with me until dad can come get her or, you know, till grandparents can come get her. So it kind of depends, you know, um, sometimes she'll help me ride on the board. You know, we do shoot around in the morning. Um, you know, from there, my first year, my first year I coached, I was pregnant. And so I always had cravings of tomato soup, which I don't even like tomatoes, tomato soup and grilled cheese. And so like every game day I went to Sandwich, it's like right by our school and I got tomato soup with grilled cheese. So that was kind of my thing, uh, that first year, but usually I'll go get something to eat. Um, come back and just, you know, watch a little bit more film and kind of get my mind right. And the players, hopefully, most of the time, I feel like they go take a nap and, you know, they kind of all have their pregame things that they do. Um, But, you know, for the most part, it's just about, you know, getting your rest, getting your mind right and um, getting ready to go. And sometimes my two-year-old joins with me and um, it, it. looks a little bit different, but I think it's it's probably good for the both of us. <laughs> what is that like getting to have your two-year-old see you as a head coach and getting to see her mom experience this as a head coach? It's the best. She, um, I don't think she quite understands like what I do yet. She just, she thinks, you know, that's mommy's girls, mommy's girls. And um, so she, she loves the team, loves being around them and they spoil her for sure. I After games, I look over and she's got like a cookie in one hand, a brownie in the other. But, you know, I think it's it's not only important for her, but I think it's really important for our team to see that you can do both. You know, you can be ahead of something and have a child and have your child around. It's it's not easy. And um, my husband is the best supporter of like what we're doing here. But I think it's it's really important for not only my daughter to be around them, but for them to be around her and just it, it, 
also shows me in a different light of not just a coach, but a mom. And they're able to see that as well. I think being vulnerable in those like kind of situations is really important for your team to see. What does that recruitment process look like for those prospective student athletes? And as a head coach, what do you look at in those prospective student athletes? Yeah, you know, that recruiting is probably the hardest part of my job. It's it's just, it's kind of scary because you don't exactly know who you're getting into your program and you want to make sure you get the right people, but you don't always get it right. And so, um, you know, first and foremost, it's about who they are and then what they, you know, how they fit within your team. You know, you want to make sure that they're going to be successful here so they don't, you know, want to leave and you want to win. So, you know, we, with the NAIA, they're allowed to come practice with us. We don't have any rules against that. They can come do workouts. And so that is really nice for me to be able to see how they learn, how they fit in with our team. Also gives them a good idea of like what my coaching style is like, you know, what it's, what practices are going to look like and goes both ways. So I think, you know, it's, it's a lot about like the relationship to start and knowing who is behind that relationship, knowing those coaches, having a relationship with them. That's when you get the best kids because you know exactly where they're coming from too. So yeah, a lot of it is on fit and you don't always get it right. And that's, that is the hardest part I think is you don't always get it right, but how are you going to make it work regardless? And so yeah, definitely the hardest part of the job, um, but it is, it's really fun when you start kind of molding your own own team together, and it's really fun when a player is really excited about you too, and really excited about coming to SOU, and that's what, that's what this is about, is them having a great experience. How is it like getting to see them on the official visit, fall in love with the campus and command. Yeah, it's it's so much fun. <laughs> I always go back to she's a freshman now. Well, actually, she's going to be a sophomore. But you know, she came on her visit, and I just loved her. Like she fits exactly what we we want. She practiced with us for two days and just fit right in. And so I remember like offering her in my office, and she couldn't stop smiling. She was so excited, but didn't commit yet because she needed to go talk to her mom and so um, I think it was like a couple days after she got home she called me and committed and she was like oh, I wanted to commit on the visit but I knew my mom would kill me if she if I didn't go home and talk to her about it so it was really cute to see that and you know that again it makes it really special because you're getting people who want to be here and you know the the fit is mutual and it, it has to be mutual for it to work as a head coach what is it like seeing those freshmen put on that southern Oregon? orange jersey for the first time yeah it's a lot of fun you know i think they're probably nervous as heck when they do it but it's a lot of fun to see them grow and you know we've had a lot of young players you know the past few years through our program just continue to get better and um, now they're seniors you know and so it's been really fun to see them grow and take pride in in being a, an athlete at sou and you know loving it and you know you can tell by their social media posts if they love SOU or if they don't, right? Like they they post everything. So, <laughs> um, but no, it's it's a lot of fun seeing them them grow and enjoy what they're doing. What is it like for you getting to see those seniors put on that jersey for the last time? Yeah, it's it's emotional for sure. I, um, you know, this year three seniors had been with me all three years, and this next year I'll have two of them that had been with me all four years. And so, you know, and, and it regardless, even those first year seniors, um, I had four of them, you know, second year seniors, I had three and, you know, we've all been through a lot together. And so it's really hard to like see them move on, but you've got to let go at some point. <laughs> it's, it's scary, but um, it's fun to see them, you know, grow in the, in their path and um, do what they came here to do. And that was to get a great education and continue their career and whatever they want. And so, you know, they always come back. A lot of them come back and see their friends and hang out in Ashland and, um, you know, definitely reach out to them as well. But it's emotional because, you know, you're a family, you spend nine months, 10 months out of the year together, like every day, pretty much. So um, it's it's definitely weird when they're not there anymore all of a sudden. <laughs> what is it like seeing them represent the 
logo and putting it on. Yeah, again, it's just they take a lot of pride in it. You know, SOU and Ashland is a is a small community. And so, you know, if they go out into the community, people know who they are. And, you know, they, oh, we watched your game. Great job, you know. And so they they are well known around all of our sports teams are well known around the community. And I'm um, just having pride in that. Um, you know, each of our sports teams, they're really good. Like we are a you know, we have a national champions in softball and wrestling. Football's continuing to grow. Men's soccer won conference last year. And so this is a place where people want to win. Everybody's competing. And that is really special, I think. That's kind of what makes this place special is that everybody year in and year out are competing for championships. And um, everybody supports that. All these sports teams, they go to each other's games. They hang out with each other. So it's definitely a, a very um, tight-knit family vibe when you're here. For you as a head coach, what is it like seeing those players go on and play in the WNBA? Yeah, you know, here we we don't, you know, get quite as obviously, we don't get any, any WNBA players here. But we've had, you know, players in the past go play play overseas. And so that's been really fun to, you know, when I was at San Jose State, there's been a couple of players that have played overseas and had really good careers. Same with Arizona State. Um, I know we'll get a couple out of here that will want to play overseas as well. So it's definitely a challenge because you're away from your family. But, um, you know, if that's what they want to do, we're going to help them pursue that. It's a really cool experience. Like, why not go play basketball and live in another country for a year and make a little bit of money for it. So, you know, it's it's neat to see them just continuing to live out their dream. What are some of your future plans for the program moving? Yeah, you know, like I said earlier, we want to we want to get to that point where we can we are contending for a national championship and that's um definitely my goal here. And so that, you know, it starts with our culture and it starts with, you know, who we're bringing into the program um and then just continuing to get better on both sides of the ball. Um, my philosophy, my game management continuing to get better, uh, me as a coach, you know, and, and what we do day in and day out continuing to get better. So, you know, that again, when you when you want to win a national championship and that's at the top of your list, it's you can keep it there, but you got to have a process um, and be process oriented and not always be thinking about that. Right. You've got to be thinking about what am I going to do today to get better? And so that's definitely an area that I'm I'm continuing to focus on because um, I think if we just do that little by little, we're going to be, you know, in the works for for something bigger and, um, you know, our goal here of winning a national championship. What advice would you give those incoming freshmen entering their first year of college women's basketball? Yeah, freshman year is a complete whirlwind. Um, and you can say you're ready for it, but you're not. <laughs> you need you need help and you need to not be afraid to ask for help. I think that's a big one as freshmen is you come and you, you're you independent. But the nice thing about being on a team is that you can ask for help. You can ask your teammates, you can ask your coaches. And so I'm um, just not being afraid to ask for help. And then the other thing was, uh, I would say is like prioritizing, you know, school and basketball, those two come first in that order, and then social life, but you've got to take care of yourself. And I think when you're living in the dorms and all this fun stuff is going on, you start getting wrapped up in that um, and you lo lose sight of school, you know, and lose sight of basketball. And so I think, you know, prioritizing and, and time management, those go hand in hand. You know, you prioritize school basketball first. I'm going to get my homework done. I'm going to get extra shots up. Okay, now maybe I have some time for some social life. You know, not that not that you shouldn't have social life. You should, but you, you know, have to make sure that you're doing doing what you need to do first. So that's what I would I would give them that advice and to like let your seniors, let your juniors help you through it, get advice from them because they've been through it and they probably made a lot of mistakes and you're going to make mistakes. You're just going to have to learn through it. So yeah, that would definitely be my advice to them. What advice would you give those college juniors out there transitioning into being seniors and leading the program? Yeah, that's a great question. And that's a, it really is a huge transition, you know, and, and it doesn't always have to be seniors that are leaders. Um, but a lot of times those seniors are, are ready, but at the same time, it's a totally different role. You know, you, you can't focus on people liking you all the time. 
you can't focus on being best friends with everybody all the time. Focus is to hold people accountable while you're doing the right thing. You know, if, if you're not getting in the gym and you're not putting in time, you can't like you don't have a whole lot of clout to say things to other people, if that makes sense. So, you know, I think that the big one is just to not be extremely worried about what people think, but be worried about doing the right thing and um, being a servant leader, right? And, you know, see any feel any, that is going to be kind of, I guess if I have a saying, that's going to be our saying this year. You know, it doesn't matter if you're a freshman or if you're, you know, a senior, like if something needs to be picked up, if something needs to be done, like, and you see a need, go do it. There's, you know, and and I think, you know, for a lot of our, we have seven seniors this year. So it's going to be a, a huge, huge class for me to recruit, number one. But, you know, we've got a lot of experience. And so how are we going to make sure that experience is all going to the right place and to the same place? And so I think, you know, with, with the ones that are going to, you know, emerge as those leaders, they, they have to hold not only themselves accountable, but their teammates accountable. And then we have to have people that will listen and, and will follow at the same time. So yeah, they just, it's, it's time. That's another one. Like it is time to grow up a little bit, you know, it's time to have a voice a little bit and, and not worry so much about what people are thinking, but about you doing the right thing that's going to make the team better. What advice would you have those college basketball players out there that have aspirations of playing in the WNBA or international? Yeah, you know, being around those WNBA players during the summers, th I mean, their work ethic is insane. And you don't understand it until you go to a practice and until you go to a training camp. And so, you know, when I see players say they want to play in the WNBA, but then I see them in practice and they're not going a hundred miles an hour, it's not going to work. And, you know, when I see those players in working out and even in individual workouts, like they are going so hard all the time and just telling them like number one you need to go watch games right you need to watch the WNBA you need to watch overseas games and and look at what's their style what are they like can can I actually do this and I think that goes for a lot of recruits too they're like oh I can play at this level well have you watched that level do you know you can play at that level um and so that is a big one, but your work ethic and your like professionalism of how you go about every day has to be extremely high to be able to make it into a league like that, especially WNBA. It's extremely competitive. You know, there's 12 roster spots on each team and they are expanding, which is great, but um, it's extremely competitive. And if you are not going 100% in every single workout, it's going to be really difficult for you to make it because those women are competing at such a high level that it's just, it's different. They, they are, they're different. <laughs> and so, um, you know, I think it's, again, it's that work ethic and professionalism um, to get to that next level that you have to have. What advice would you give those future head coaches out there looking to build their own program and build their own legacy? Yeah. I mean, I still need a lot of advice because this is only year three for me, but I think the biggest advice I ever, I probably got from my grandpa was like, start building your philosophy. And I know a lot of NBA coaches, they, they talk about that too, is like, who, who do you want to be? How do you want to play? And Yes, you have to tweak things here and there with like the players that you have, but you need to establish how you want to be. And so, you know, I knew coming into this job, like I wanted to be a pressure defensive person. I think my family would disown me if I didn't do that. I would, and if we played zone, um, because they invented it, but um, we are going to pressure people. We're going to play up tempo. Um, and that's who we're, that's my philosophy. That's who we're going to be. We're going to be a team that loves each other. We're going to be a, a team of toughness. We're going to be a team with like, there's no back down. That's kind of uh, who I am a little bit. I never thought I would be this way, but it's interesting when you step into a head coaching role, like your kind of true identity comes out a little bit if that's good or bad. But I think, you know, I 
I have started to, I started to build my philosophy as an assistant and now as a head coach, I'm still continuing to build it. Like I'm, I'm not completely there yet, but I have a good base of like who I want to be and what I want my teams to be. And then tweaking it, being creative, you know, especially on the offensive end, that's somewhere that I'm not as good. And so just continuing to learn and grow and um, be a student of the game is, is really important, but um, yeah, that's, that's my biggest advice is build your philosophy and, you know, make good connections. I think a, a lot of young coaches and I could get caught up in this too, when I was younger is, you know, building so many connections at the final four, whatever that is, but are you building good, genuine connections? Are you building, you know, connections with people that are going to have your back? And, um, I felt like, you know, with Charlie, at Arizona State, like, and Coach Hammy at Winthrop. And, um, you know, those are, those are really good people that help me grow that, you know, if I need them to get on the phone, they would. And so just making sure that you have the right people in your corner when you're wanting to continue your career that's, that are going to help build you up. Dad obviously is already built in. So that was a helpful one for me, but just making sure that you have good people in your corner. It doesn't matter the amount of people you have in your corner. It matters who they are. Um, and so I think that's another really important thing for especially young coaches to understand is you don't need a ton. Just have good people. That's great advice. Where can my listeners find you at on social media along with the Southern Oregon's women's basketball program? Yeah. So my uh, Twitter is Coach Klopp 2. If you just type in Coach Klopp, you'll get my dad. So he's a, he's a good follow too. Although he doesn't tweet enough, I got to get him on there. But Coach Klopp 2 and then as well as on Instagram. Um, and then our our uh, women's basketball case pages sou raiders underscore wbb so we put a lot of fun stuff on there you know on instagram and twitter and or x i keep calling it twitter i can't get it out of my head <laughs> yeah just a really fun fun team to follow and hopefully we can get some more fans from this from this podcast <laughs> thank you again coach prove it for your envy and best luck in your future at southern oregon thank you so much for having me you can find brandon sports talk on instagram at brandon sports talk twitter at talk and score brandon and you can find me on youtube at brandon sports talk don't forget to like comment and subscribe Thank you again, Coach Pruitt, for your interview. Best luck in the future. Thank you. You've been watching Brandon Sports Talk. Please feel free to like, share, and subscribe to Brandon Sports Talk on social media and on YouTube.